bracha is Dav Lamed Hey, brand new parak Ketan Mevarchim, which discusses the brachas that we make on food. We all know that the fruit of a tree you make Bayer Priyat, besides on wine, which is Bayer Priyagafen. The fruit of the ground, the vegetables, you make Bayer Priyadama, besides on bread, which you make Hamaytzi Lechem and Aret. Rabbi Yudha says that if they are greens, the Yerakos, like cabbage, lettuce, you make Bayer Minei Deshaim. Where do we know the concept of the brachas? How do you know that you have to make a bracha? The end of the Gemara, the Maskana is that it's a svara, it's logic. It's also to benefit from this world without making a bracha. You might think that you learn it out from the same Pesach that Rebbe Kiva learns it out. We know there's a concept called Arla. The first three years of fruit, you cannot benefit from the fruit. On the fourth year, it's called Neta Revai. We treat it exactly like we treat Meiser Shani. That is, if you want to eat your fruit, you must bring it up to Yerushalayim. If you don't want to bring it up to your shlaim, you mechalal the fruit on money. You deconsecrate it on money. Says the Gemara, Rebbe Kiva holds, it says in the Pasuk, Kodesh Hilulim Hashem. You make two halals, two praises to Hashem. One before you eat the fruit, and one after you eat the fruit. Yet, we know that according to everybody, you need one of those Hilulim to teach us the concept that you mechalal the fruit on money. Now we're left with one. Now, the second Hilul, you might need it to teach us that the Pasuk is talking about grapes. Even if you say that the Pasuk is talking about all fruit, not the Revai, not Kerem Revai, or even if you have another Limud of Xer Shava. So that leaves us just with one Bracha. I would use that for Birgis HaMazim. Birgis HaMazim is the right, so I would say, the Torah is telling us they have to make Birgis HaMazim. And how do I know they have to make a Bracha before you eat? It will be Kabbalah if I make a bracha after I'm satiated, so certainly when I'm hungry, I should make a bracha. The problem is, where do I learn brachas for all other foods? And if I say, let's learn from grapes, grapes have something special. They have something called oilalais. Oilalais, I'm a chuyiv, to give it to the poor person, and therefore I have to make a bracha. Perhaps I should learn it from bread. Bread has a concept of challah, so maybe that's why I make a bracha. Maybe combine the two, learn from both of them together, well, the two of them are special, bread and wine, because they go on the Mizbeach. Learn it out from the Shivaminam. Shivaminam, you have to make a bracha. No, Shivaminam have Bikurim, where other food doesn't. And besides, according to the Madhu that says, Netaravai, how does he know foods that don't grow on the ground, such as meat, eggs and fish? Therefore, we have to come on to the logic. Svara tells me that it's Asr, to benefit from this world without making a bracha, and whoever benefits from this world without making a bracha, it's as if he did me ilah, he's stealing from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he's stealing from Knesset Yisrael. And he's in the company of Yerav and Benavat, which is the symbol of Rishas, Chayte Umachti, not only does he sin, Yerav and Benavat was a king that caused Klai Yisrael to sin as well, and therefore one should go to a Chacham before he eats, and he should learn the brachas of food. It says in the Pasuk, Lashem Haaretz Mulayo, the entire land belongs to Hashem. On the other hand, it says, Haaretz Nasan Levnei Adam, Hashem gave us the land, so which one is it? Well, before you make a bracha, Hashem owns it. Once you make a bracha, you buy it off Hashem, you have permission to use it. And this brings us to Ahmed Beis, it says in the Pasuk, Lashafta the Gancha, and then it says, Velokachta the Gani. On the one hand, it's the Gancha, it's our grain, on the other hand, it's Hashem's grain, which one is it? When we do Hashem's will, it's our grain. When we don't do Hashem's will, it remains Hashem's grain. And the famous Machlaikas, whether a person should spend his days learning Torah or combine learning Torah with earning a living, it says in the Pasuk, Vasafta the Gancha, you should go out and gather your grain. In other words, you're a farmer. On the other hand, it says that you have to learn, Vagisa by Yoyma Valayla, you should learn day and night. Which one is it? Says Rabbi Shmuel, you have to combine the two. You have to learn Torah, but combine it with Derech Eretz, with earning a living. Rabbi Shem Bayechai says, it doesn't make sense to me that a person should waste his life plowing and working on the field and gathering the grain. Therefore, if you do Hashem's will, then His Parnassah will be done through other people. But if you don't do Hashem's will, not only will you have to earn a living, but you will earn a living for other people as well. Says Abaya, many people did what Rabbi Shmuel said, which is to combine earning a living with Taira, and it worked for them, and many people tried Rabbi Shmuel by Chayzwai, and it did not work for them. You have to be Zaycha to be on that Madrega, 
to just learn Torah all day. The first generations, Darius HaKadmonim, they made their Torah the main part of the day, and their earning a livelihood was only a temporary part of the day. It was a small part of the day. They didn't try to come up with tricks to outdo the Torah and their mitzvahs. They would bring their grain right through the front door, right through the front gate, which would create a chiyav of meiser. And therefore, says the Gemara, their Torah stayed and their livelihood. They made a good living. But the later generations, where they made their livelihood the main part of the day, and the Torah was just a little small part of the day, and they came up with a trick, how to prevent themselves from having to give meiser by bringing the food through the, the skylight, they didn't learn Torah, and they didn't earn a good living. On olive oil, you don't make the bracha boire pre eight zayis because you don't become satiated from olive oil. Wine which satiates you and also makes you happy, you make boire pre agafen, but you don't make birkas hamazen because no one is a kveya a suuda on wine. And if you do, your butla daitay tzikaladam, you're different. Unless the Yohanavi will come and tell us that that's how you make a suuda. You don't make a bracha on oil because it damages the body. But if you put oil with your bread, you dip your bread in oil, like in those Israeli restaurants, the oil becomes a tuffle to the bread, and the main thing is the bread, so you don't make a bracha on the oil. If you put shemen, oil, in anig- anigarain, which is a certain mixture with beet soup, you put oil, olive oil, into beet soup, over there, the oil is a tuffle, and you don't make a bracha on the oil. However, if your throat hurts, and you're eating the olive oil in the anigarain, because you want the olive oil, because it's going to smooth out the throat, so then you do make a bracha, very pre eight on the olive oil and the chiddushes that even though you're doing it for medicine, you still have to make a bracha. Have a wonderful day.